All right, buckle up, because today we are taking a deep dive into Moldova. Well, Moldova. Yeah, Moldova. <laughs> I know, I know. You're probably thinking Moldova is that. Well, stick with us. This one is a real head scratcher. Sounds intriguing. It is. So Moldova is this small nation nestled between Romania and Ukraine. Okay, I'm picturing it. And get this. It's considered the poorest nation in Europe. But here's the thing. Their GDP just keeps growing. Really? Seriously. Like between 5% to 10% every year. Oh, it's crazy. How can a country struggling with so much poverty still manage that kind of growth? Well, that's exactly what we're going to try and figure out today. You've definitely piqued my interest. Moldova's story sounds like a real paradox. The legacy of their Soviet past combined with, well, you mentioned their agricultural output. It's kind of remarkable. Oh, yeah. Their agriculture is off the charts. We're talking like 1.1 million tons of wheat in 2018 alone. Wow. And, and get this 730,000 tons of grapes. Yeah. That's got to be enough for a whole country's worth of wine, right? Yeah. And I haven't even gotten to the sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds. How many are we talking about? 788,000 tons. It's mind-blowing. It really is incredible. But when you think about it, Moldova does have that incredibly fertile Chernozem soil and a really favorable climate. So it makes sense that agriculture makes up such a big chunk of their GDP, something like 40 percent. Right? Yeah, 40 percent. But you said it yourself. It's a bit of a paradox. I mean, at first glance, all that food seems like a good thing. So what's the catch? Well, it's all about vulnerability. Vulnerability. Yeah. This heavy reliance on agriculture leaves them very exposed to external shocks, especially given their history. Think about it. When the Soviet Union collapsed, Moldova was suddenly cut off. From the energy and raw materials they depended on, right? Exactly. They had been part of that Soviet system for so long. So I imagine that transition hit them pretty hard. It did. They faced those same brutal challenges as many former Soviet republics. Remember that crazy time of hyperinflation back in the 90s? Oh, man. The 90s? Weren't their inflation rates just unbelievable? Absolutely unbelievable. In 1994, their inflation rate reached a staggering 105%. Just let that sink in for a moment, 105%. Prices were skyrocketing, savings were wiped out. It was chaos. That's insane. It was a truly turbulent time. And just as things were beginning to stabilize in the early 2000s, they got hit again, this time by a brutal drought in 2003. Oh, no. Yeah, it was devastating for their agricultural output. Prices went through the roof. So it was like one economic shock after another. It was. And if that wasn't bad enough, there was also the 1998 Russian ruble devaluation, which had a ripple effect across the entire region. It hit Moldova particularly hard and underlined their continued dependence on Russia even after the Soviet Union had collapsed. Wow, they really have been through the ringer. But even with all of those setbacks, their economy was still managing to grow. How was that even possible? Where was that growth coming from? Well, this is where things get interesting. You see, a big chunk of Moldova's GDP comes from an unexpected source, remittances. Remittances. You mean money sent back by Moldovans working abroad? Precisely. And we're not just talking about a little bit of money here. It makes up a substantial portion of their entire economy. Wow, I hadn't even considered that. But isn't that a little, I don't know, risky? Relying on money from outside the country so much? It is risky. It's a double-edged sword. How so? Well, on the one hand, these remittances, they have been absolutely crucial for boosting household incomes and keeping the economy afloat, really. But on the other hand, this reliance on remittances makes Moldova vulnerable to economic shocks in other countries. So if, let's say, there's a recession in Russia or in Western Europe where many Moldovans have migrated for work, Moldova feels that pinch directly. Exactly. It's a direct hit to their economy. And it's not just economic downturns they have to worry about. Political decisions in those countries can have a huge impact, too. Like that 2006 Russian ban on Moldovan wine. Exactly. That was a major blow to Moldova's economy. Especially since Russia was, and I'm guessing still is, a huge market for their wine. Oh, absolutely. A huge market for Moldovan wine. <laughs> The ban, though it was eventually lifted, it really exposed how vulnerable they were, how reliant they were on a single export market. Ouch, that's got to hurt. <laughs> Talk about putting all your eggs in one basket. Uh -huh. And now here we are in 2024 with the war in Ukraine right next door. That can't be making things any easier for them, can it? No, not at all. The war has just piled on more pressure, added another layer of complexity to Moldova's already fragile economic reality. 
Remember those doubling gas prices we talked about? Yeah. And then there was that other devastating drought in 2007, crippling their agricultural output. The war has just intensified all of these existing challenges. There's so much uncertainty. It's disrupting regional trade flows. It's a mess. It sounds like they're constantly battling one crisis after another. Yeah. So how are they coping? What are they doing to try to break free from this cycle of instability? They're trying. They really are. One of their main strategies has been to attract foreign investment. They're realizing they need to diversify. Makes sense. Move away from relying so heavily on agriculture. Exactly. They've set up this organization called Invest Moldova, and they've been developing free economic zones and industrial parks, trying to incentivize businesses, you know, tax breaks, streamlined regulations, that sort of thing. Okay, I get the tax breaks and easier regulations, but what exactly are these free economic zones and industrial parks? Are we talking about like special economic hubs within Moldova? Yeah, exactly. Think of them as designated areas that are designed to attract foreign investment, boost specific industries, and they have, as I said, more business-friendly regulations, tax incentives, that kind of thing. Okay, so they're making it as attractive as possible for outside companies to invest. Mm. But is it working? Well, it's slow going. It's been a challenge to attract really significant foreign investment. And then, of course, there was that banking scandal back in 2014. Oh, right. That was a big deal, wasn't it? It was huge. Absolutely huge. It nearly crippled their economy and really scared off a lot of investors. I can imagine. That kind of thing takes a long time to recover from. It does. It really does. But, you know, it's not all doom and gloom. The IMF released a report in 2023 that highlighted some positive signs. For example, Moldovan banks are now considered adequately capitalized, meaning they have enough reserves to absorb potential losses. And the quality of their assets has improved, which means less risk for investors. So there are some glimmers of hope amidst all the challenges. Oh, absolutely. And you can't discount the resilience of the Moldovan people. They've been through so much, and they always seem to find a way to keep going to keep striving for a better future. They really have wetted some incredible storms. But even with the economic growth they've experienced, they're still the poorest nation in Europe. How do they bridge that gap? That is the million dollar question, isn't it? And unfortunately, there's no easy answer. While they've seen some economic growth, the real challenge lies in making sure the growth benefits everyone in Moldova, not just a select few. And that's where things get really complicated. It's a tough situation. It's like they're trying to lift everyone up, but they're doing it on shaky ground. That's a great way to put it. And it highlights the complexity of the problem. It's not enough to just grow the economy. They've got to make sure that growth reaches every corner of their society, tackles poverty head on, creates opportunities for everyone. So what's the path forward? What do they need to do to really thrive? Well, it's a long road, that's for sure. But they've got to continue to diversify their economy, move away from that dependence on agriculture. They need to attract investments in other areas, things like IT, manufacturing, maybe even renewable energy. Renewable energy. That's interesting. I mean, given their history with energy dependence, wouldn't that be a smart move? Yeah. You know, become more self-sufficient, rely less on outside sources. Exactly. It's a no-brainer, really. Moldova has so much potential in renewable energy, especially with all that sunshine. They could really ramp up their solar power and wind power, too. It just makes sense. It does. Less reliance on others, cleaner energy. But looking beyond just sectors, what about their place in the world? We've talked about their Soviet past, their close ties to Russia, and now they've got the war in Ukraine right next door. What does that all mean for their economic future? How do they balance all of that? That's a really important question. Hmm. Moldova is in a really tricky spot. They're caught between Russia and the European Union, trying to walk this tightrope between their historical ties and their desire for closer integration with the EU. So it's almost like they're caught in this geopolitical tug of war. It is a bit of a tug of war, yeah. Yeah. And that has a very real impact on their economy. For example, trying to attract foreign investment is a whole lot harder when the world sees your neighborhood as unstable. It makes their struggle for economic stability even more impressive when you think about it that way. They're dealing with so much. They are. It's true. But I'm cautiously optimistic. Oh. Yeah. I mean, they've got a young, energetic population, a growing tech sector, and a real hunger for positive change. And let's not forget that resilience we talked about, their ability to bounce back from adversity. Yeah. They face some pretty huge challenges, challenges that would have crippled other countries, and they've come through it. Absolutely. They adapt, they get back up, they keep pushing forward. That says a lot about them. It really does. Yep. So for our listeners out there, the next time you hear the name Moldova, I hope you won't just think of it as a name on a map. I hope you'll remember this conversation. It's a small country, 
facing big challenges, absolutely, but it's also a country determined to forge its own path. And I like that, forging their own path. It's a great reminder that economies are about people. Moldova's story, it's a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. And that's something worth paying attention to. It really is. And on that note, we'll leave you with this thought. Keep an eye on Moldova. Their story is far from over. Rawr. And it will be fascinating to see what they do next.